It sounds like the tone is a big change there. Do you agree? Well, you know, we're less than two weeks away, so I think people are, are interested in getting some contrast out there, and that's a good thing. We're not all identical people. Scott, it sounded like you were actually up a little bit today. You were more a little more confrontation and have them in the past, is that intentional? Well, look, I want to make sure that voters are having the chance to know what I'm about and that Karin and I are going to go uh, push forward a bold agenda that makes this state better and we're the ones that are going to really take on the scale of government and, you know, we have a bolder plan for reducing spending. We're the only ones that said that we want to eliminate Minture. We're the only ones that have called on President Obama to not move the immigration crisis from the southern border to our state's border. We're the only ones calling for term limits, and we're the only ones that have the resources to take on Governor Dayton in November. And I want to make sure voters know that and know what we're about and see the differences between me and the field of, of you know, three politicians that have been in office collectively for half a century. Some of them would say that's an advantage because they, they know how to work the system, they know how things work at the Capitol. Well, look, I think I have the advantage in that I have the experience of, of leading a large organization and know how to get results. And that's what we need in government. We need, to, we need someone that knows how to focus on results and build the team and market what we're trying to do to this state. We haven't seen Republican leaders doing that in Minnesota, and I think I'm the only one that has the experience to make that happen. You come out of the hospital and the, the temperature of the campaign seems to have heated up a bit. Uh, maybe a bit and, and you know I, I predicted that I said towards the end who you know the folks who feel they're behind will probably start going after the folks who they think are ahead and we'll probably see that for the next couple weeks. Do you think that's what happened with you? I do that's kind of what we've been seeing the last week or two is a lot lot more of the kind of the, the hits to other Republicans particularly me as opposed to focusing on Dayton which I'm going to continue to do. So you were saying that you're ahead? I believe I'm ahead, and I, I have a funny feeling that others do as well. <laughs> you emphasized uh, being a realist uh, when it comes to some of these bold ideas. Uh, is that important? It is, and bold ideas are great. I have them too, but I think we, actually, we just have to be honest with people about what we can try to accomplish. I can say, here's where I want to go, but I'm not going to say, here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to cut government 10% across the board with the DFL Senate. I would love to. Actually, I wouldn't love to. I think that's a, I think that's a terrible way to do it. I think you cut certain things and don't cut other things. But, but I think making promises that you can't keep is what drives everybody crazy about politicians. How are you feeling? I feel good. I'm a little slow, but uh, you know, every day's better. <laughs> you you seem a, a little reluctant, to, less so than than your rivals, at going at each other instead of uh, focusing on. on Governor Dayton, is that is that the case? Well, I'm, I'm running against Governor Dayton. You know, the primary is amongst uh, fellow Republicans, but my the reason I'm running for governor is because I think Mark Dayton is failing our state, whether it be as our students in our schools, the people who have companies here, or the taxpayers of the state. So, um, you know, my fellow Republicans and I all have a similar focus. I don't think it does any of us any good to take pot shots at each other on radio stations or in debates. So. Um, my focus is absolutely on Governor Dayton and how I'm going to move the state forward. The only candidate in the race that has proven and actually passed budgets who has balanced a budget without a tax increase. And whether or not you're the one guy that went to all counties or have a big bag of money, I don't think it really matters. But some of your rivals took a much uh, more aggressive tone today. Uh, do you think that was the wrong thing to do? That's up to them. Uh, you know, I, I'm happy to present my case to the voters of Minnesota when my record is distorted or in some ways, you know, what I've been doing isn't properly addressed. I'll do that. I, you know, I was happy to tell Scott, look, I fought off Minsure before it was here when I was Speaker of the House. So to say you're the only one that, you know, is calling for Minsure to be repealed is, you know, that's just not factually accurate. Those things are all correct. But uh, I just don't think it does us any good to, to start taking pot shots at each other when the goal is to make sure that Mark Dayton isn't governor next year. Do you think Scott was taking pot shots? No, I don't think so. I, just in that case, I was just correcting the record. He's not the only one that's called for, you know, us to repeal the interest. I think every single one of us has. You're going into this uh, August 12th primary. It is August 12th, right? Yes. Uh, no. With, uh, with <laughs> the, uh, you, you don't have the GOP uh, sure. stamp. Uh, how do, what do you say to conservatives in the state? You know, we have not heard uh, at all on the campaign trail, are you Republican endorsed or not? It is, what are you going to do for the state? What are you going to do to make Minnesota a more business competitive state? How are you going to improve our schools? How are you going to improve our roads? What is it that you're going to do that's different from the current governor? Uh, with that, I'm very comfortable with that because that's what the voters want to hear about. That's what they want you to explain to them, not 
whether or not a group of people decided that you're the smartest or the best or the handsomest. What are you going to do to make our state better? And, and working with the with the Democratic Senate for the next two years, how do you how do you finesse that? Well, again, as Speaker, we had to have a number of our budget items, but also some of the key initiatives passed and signed by a governor who was a Democrat. In working with a majority when I was in the House and in the Senate, or excuse me, we in the House, but the Senate was in the majority, I passed life in prison for violent sex offenders. I got a Maple Grove Hospital built in, in my area. Uh, I passed a bill that you know, improved the lives, I think, of a lot of teenage kids when it came to adult treatment centers. So I've actually been able to work with those folks. I can, Tom Bach and I will be lockstep, because he said, just like Rudy Perpich, we should be out of the top 10 in taxes. I'm going to take him at his word. I'll be happy to work with Tom Bach on that. Are you going to continue negotiations with the state of North Dakota? <laughs> <laughs> to get some of our land back or get a loan? Yeah. Or, yeah. We're not going to secede Moorhead, I swear okay. to you. We're not giving up Moorhead. You're not going to demand they build a prettier capital? Or anything. Well, that's up to Matt Dean. He's made his bed. He can sit in that. <laughs>